Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to go through some jobs in IT. I'm going to break down the salaries for you. I'm going to break down my thoughts and I'm going to break down what I think the expectations of you in that job might be. I've had many roles in IT including plenty of these jobs that we're about to review. You can have a look at them in my video above. That video goes through my background in IT and all the roles that I've had in the past and how I've gone from a service desk analyst all the way up to a principal cloud consultant and our director. But before we get into it, if you like what you see, if you like IT content, you like some tech fun, see all my other videos. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, let me know what you think. Go through my playlist, see how I can give you some more value. And once that's done, let's get straight into it. So, I do have a few roles I'd like to talk to you about today. And I'll give you, what I'll do is I'll give you a quick breakdown of the role, what I think the role might pay, and what I think the expectations of you in that role would be. So let's start with a service desk analyst. Okay, so a service desk analyst role is a level one role. So that is the type of role that you would get into if you were potentially looking for your first job in IT. So your first job in IT is generally very close to like a customer support representative, but with some, someone that has lots of IT skills. So, so generally in this person, we'd be looking for someone that can help us do password resets, taking phone calls as the first point of contact from the users. So maybe on a Monday morning, they'll be on the phone, they'll be ringing red hot in the morning because everyone's forgotten their password, as we all know. But that, that help desk engineer or the service desk analyst, they will be looking, they'll be sitting there and they'll be taking those calls and they'll be either fixing them. So they'll be trying to resolve issues like application troubleshooting, maybe email issues, maybe password issues. And if they can't fix it, they'll be looking to delegate it to level two engineers. The service desk analyst role generally pays, I would say, probably between 45000 to 65000 plus super, plus benefits, sorry. Uh, I think that that's a good starting range. So if you can find yourself a job, uh, service desk analyst job within that sort of region, I think that's a good start. The next one on my list is end user computing or level two engineer. So that is one step up from the service desk analyst or the help desk engineer. And generally, we would call that a level two engineer, and they would generally be on site. So back when I was a when I was EUC, a EUC engineer would actually be on site. They would be on field. They would be with all the customers, with the users that are actually using the platform. So they'd be doing things like building the desktops, uh, fixing printers, fixing actual hardware issues with end user computer systems. Uh, maybe updating or maintaining the SOEs the, um, and the images that were used on the new machines that come in, for example. Generally, they will stop troubleshooting at that server level. So once the issue has been deemed to not be on the user's local machine and maybe it's been deemed on a um, server, that's when they would escalate. I would say that a EUC engineer would probably be getting paid between, I would say 65,000 to 85,000, depending on how much skill they have. And generally they would be looking for someone that has one to two years experience as a help desk analyst. I really think that is absolutely crucial. I have seen a lot in my time where people come in into the IT field straight into a desktop role. I think that that is a big, uh, mistake by organizations. I think that anyone who works in support needs to at least do a one year or so in help desk analyst roles because that's where you really learn that troubleshooting skill and where you learn how to be an analytical thinker. A third level engineer or a system engineer has many different flavors. So let's just talk a system engineer who may take care of a Linux machine, Unix machines or Windows machines. So without any particular tech stack that they are really um, assigned to, this person would do more things like Windows Server troubleshooting or building Windows servers, um, installing roles on Windows servers or Linux servers and troubleshooting Linux servers. This person is generally responsible for maintaining all server systems. So anything that comes from the level two guys into the level three guys queue, that would be the level three guys queue to take care of. So they will own all the Windows servers or all the Linux servers that are within the environment. They may also be asked to do things like hardware maintenance, so things like replacing disks in SANS or replacing disks in RAIDs or updating hardware and firmware on an ESX farm or something like that. A lot of the time, these people are also asked to take care of VMware environments as well. Um, 
but not really quite build or design anything. A system engineer, whether it's Linux or, you, or Windows, I would say would be worth around maybe about 85 to 110K. And then moving into the senior role, it would be more like 130 or 140 plus super. Network engineering role, so I think that that role, it, so once you get to that point where you're at level two, you're an end user computing engineer, generally people make the decision whether they want to go to a server side of infrastructure or network side. And the people who go to the network side, they will generally be taking care of things like routing and switching, maybe a bit of network security, so firewalls. They won't quite be designing anything, but they'll be doing the maintenance and the patching of all the devices, so the Cisco, HP, sometimes Juniper, all the routing and switching devices. And they'll be doing lots of troubleshooting. A lot of tickets will end up in their queue and they'll be troubleshooting as per usual. I think a network engineer is probably as same, roughly the same as a system engineer, so about 85 to 110K. And then I would say 120 to 140 for a senior engineer who is, um, who's got a bit more experience than the others. We also have a role called technical lead. So this can be in, in the network flavor or an infrastructure flavor, but generally a technical lead is someone who owns the whole, the stack. So it's usually what we would call the SME in the environment. Technical lead is someone who sits within a team, but he's, he or she is generally the go-to person for a certain tech stack. So for example, when I worked in multiple managed service providers, we had people who were very strong in VMware or very strong in Azure, and they would be the technical lead in that team because that team would be mainly taking care of VMware or Azure. So all the very hairy tickets, they end up in the technical leads queue, or that person either ends up fixing them themselves or teaching the team how to do it. They generally get paid a bit higher than the other engineers. I would probably say, in a in, in maybe between the 120 to 140 bracket plus super project engineer you might not see with that role really in anywhere except bigger managed service providers so project engineer is someone who's generally come through the ranks of uh, the support so they've gone from a system engineer to a senior system engineer and then usually the next step or logical step is a project engineer that person works on new projects so they generally implement the designs from the solution architect or the consultants, and they work in the capacity of a certain tech stack sometimes, so they might be very, very strong in VMware or very strong in Azure or very strong in AWS, and they'll go and they'll deploy someone else's design. I think that that person is generally around the 120 to 140 mark plus super. And I think that's a great role if you're looking to get into a principal consultant role or maybe a solution architect role. I think you really need to be a project engineer for a while first. Solution architect. So that's probably one of my favorite roles. That role is generally worth around 140 to 160 plus super. It's a well-paid role. I believe that it's one of the roles that people, a lot of people seek to move into. Solution Architect generally will put together a design for the project team to put together. So when we get a project that comes in, someone will scope out that project, someone will decide what tech stacks are being used, and then the Solutions Architect will put together a design or a solution that meets all the requirements of the customer, and that design will then get approved and implemented by the project teams. Enterprise Architect role, that's probably one step higher than the Solution Architect role. Enterprise Architect looks at the whole enterprise's environment rather than just one tech stack. So maybe a good example would be an ERP system, looking at how that ERP system intertwines with the organization itself and the tech stack and looking at where all the endpoints meet and how they can streamline things and how they can ensure that this process talks to this application correctly and this application meets all the functional and business requirements of the customer. Enterprise Architect, I believe, pays between around 160 to 190 plus super. It's a very, very well-paid role, but it also requires a lot of knowledge and experience across many different tech stacks because you're really owning a, a customer's whole environment. And a customer who has an Enterprise Architect isn't usually a small customer, it's usually a large customer. So you really need to be across a lot. So there's plenty of other sales roles as well, maybe roles that are a bit less technical than the ones that we've just gone through today. 
If you're interested in hearing about those, please let me know what they are in the comment section below and we'll make another video and we'll go through those ones. I hope that helps you somewhat. I hope it helps anyone that's looking to get into IT and maybe is confused with all the roles that are out there and what they should look towards getting into. If you do have any suggestions or if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.